It's going to be a great tasting, and I hope you get a chance to taste these wonderful wines. So thank you very much. Hey, everybody, come here. Everybody, put your hands together. Come on. Woo! Let's do it, both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I think everyone has the wine fever. How extreme that is depends on their time and disposable income. It's a real honor and a pleasure to have uh, Robert Parker in Hong Kong. The economic growth rate of China over the past 10 years has been the fastest in human history. China, including Hong Kong, has now become the largest importer of Bordeaux wines in the world. They just erupted and we were afraid uh, of not being able to cope with such, such a fast change. I mean, we didn't know the country and we didn't know the people, the culture. So we thought that it was very necessary to have somebody based there. Welcome to Beijing! We're very happy to sponsor one of the best events in China this year. And we are very, very happy to be there with so many beautiful girls. The idea was to promote the beauty of women in China and to promote the beauty of wine from France. So we did a kind of combination for the election last year of Miss China Universe in a very special party where the goal was to teach how to drink wine to 32 of the most beautiful women in China. Compared to France, where my generation is less excited by wine than before, you know, because it's, we had wine for hundreds of years. In China, it's very new. In some small cities in China, you arrived, there was a big red carpet. They bring two Rolls Royce to, to take care of you with hundreds of people on the side of the carpet. And you feel, well, am I uh, at the Cannes Film Festival or what? This is China getting excited by wine, getting obsessed in a way by wine because it's new, it's fun, it's French, and uh, we have so much potential in this market. When the Chinese market has been so enthusiastic that they have driven prices up to unprecedented levels, where a lot of traditional um, customers can't or don't want to follow. It would be terrible for us to lose our traditional markets because still the traditional customers share our taste and culture. It would be a big loss and we are uh, slightly worried through um, the problems that we don't, we don't see with what we can do to change that. I think the board laid run the risk of relying on the China market too much. I think that China has got a, a way to go in terms of the overall market, and there's no track record of any, or, or any, you know, long-term relationships or anything like that. I mean, that market can disappear as quickly as it appeared. The voracious nature of Bordeaux's newest customer can partly be explained by events in its recent past. Mao Zedong's cultural revolution saw nationwide repression and persecution in the name of change. I worked with many people who um, had uh, suffered in different degrees in the cultural revolution. All of them had one thing in common, that they never wanted to look back to that period. In the late 70s, China's leadership began lifting the sanctions on private ownership and personal wealth. The transition to a market economy was meant to be gradual. But after 30 years of isolation, the Chinese people had other ideas. There was a huge pent-up energy, and people were looking to regain, if you like, um, the entrepreneurial space that had always existed in China, but had been contained for so long. There was a lot of catch up to do. And you know, I think one of the most astonishing things over the last 30 years that I've seen is the speed of that catch up. 